Hello, my name is Mike Moyer, and this is the Trade Show Samurai webinar. Uh, thank you very much for taking a look at this today. Uh, what we're going to go over is a structured approach to exhibiting at trade shows that is going to enable you to make better connections with trade show attendees and ultimately collect more qualified leads than you ever thought possible in a million years. Uh, so these techniques I've developed the past maybe 20 years um, based on my uh, management of trade shows and approach to trade shows and the results have been absolutely phenomenal. Uh, I've had shows where one year they'll collect maybe a dozen leads, the next year they'll collect literally hundreds of leads using these techniques. So uh, when we apply these basic techniques, um, things really do change for the better. And it doesn't mean you have to redesign your whole approach or your booth or your even your products or anything. It just is mostly how you deal with people in the booth. But I'm going to give you a, free, a few uh, pre and post uh, marketing uh, tools that you can use as well to boost re response as well. The first thing you've got to keep in mind when it comes to trade shows is this is all about honoring sales. The, 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 the samurai honors sales. And that means we want to give our sales department things they can act on. Most of the time we come back with a box full of business cards or a sack of business cards and say, here's the people I met at the show, go nuts. And there's not much a salesperson can really do with a business card. It's just a name and address. So a business card does not equal a sales lead. Um, if you're really nice, you might put some chicken scratch on the back with a ballpoint pen. But what we really need are some leads that the sales guys can act on in a way that's meaningful to their career. So what we're going to get for them is called a virtual referral. And the way we do that is one, we plant the seed, two, we capture the lead, we solidify the brand, we cultivate prospects, and lastly we harvest the sales. That equals a virtual referral. Every sales guy knows that a real referral is what we're really after, a warm referral from something that the person knows. A virtual referral will feel like that even though it's not. So we're going to actually construct um, through our interactions with an individual uh, through the trade show process a something that feels like a warm referral. I call it a virtual referral. The first thing we got to do is plant the seed. <clears throat> Planting the seed is about being a familiar face in the crowd. Trade shows are extremely confusing, chaotic, uh, huge uh, seas of all kinds of images and, and things coming at us once, uh, all at once. So we need to be a familiar face. So as an example of this, here are some pictures of people. Some of these people you recognize immediately. Some of them you may not recognize as well, and some of them you won't recognize as al at all. Uh, the point of this is to show that when you see a familiar face, you're kind of happy. You're, you're, you're excited. You're, oh, I know that person. I know Michael J. Fox. I know who he is and what he does and what he's all about. Um, and some people you might recognize a little bit, some people might recognize more than others, but uh, the people that you don't recognize, you almost dismiss immediately. So we want to be that recognizable person on the show, show floor. And this is a tactic that I discovered um, sort of by accident based on this concept. Um, but when we did it, it was phenomenal what the results were, how, how many people came up to us at the booth and said, hey, uh, thanks for that postcard you sent us. We, we recognize you from your postcard. All we do is send a simple pre-show mailing, which is a photograph or an image of what our booth looks like. Um, and if we're good at it, we actually put our picture in and dress up in the uniform that we're going to wear and actually be in the booth so they can see our faces. Being recognizable, in the split second that someone takes us out of the mail, glances at it, and throws it in the trash, will set an impression on them that will make us recognizable when they actually see us at the trade show. So uh, sending a simple postcard like this is a great way to pre-show market. You know, A lot of people send brochures and all kinds of contest things, but the most important thing you do is just send a photograph of yourself so they'll recognize you when they get to the show. Some people choose to do, you know, stop by our booth to get a prize, and you can do that. I haven't had a lot of success with it, but uh, I've had a lot of success people recognizing who we were. We want people to recognize us and want to stop and talk to us. That's the, that's the key with the, uh, with the booth postcard. The next thing we want to do is capture the leads. Leads are the most important thing you can have at a trade show, and the trade show samurai four core arts, which I'll go over in a minute, are the most important things uh, that you can do to capture a lead. If you do nothing else, this is really the, the, the part of the seminar you want to focus on. And I want to talk about a qualified lead versus a qualifiable lead. A qualified lead is somebody who has the budget, is the decision maker, has the need, has the problem, whatever it is, whatever we need to know that this person can actually buy our product. So someone who's buying a house has to be qualified because they have enough income, they can qualify for a mortgage, they have a certain credit score. There's a number of factors that go into someone being qualified or not. It's the same for you. There's certain customers that you want to have that you can that will actually be in a position to buy from you. And there are a lot of people who simply are not in a position to buy from you. So a qualifiable lead is a lead that has the information on it that we can make a decision whether or not it's qualified or whether or not it might be qualified. So a business card does not have anything about 
uh, whether or not someone's qualified. It just is a business card with a name and address. So picture that if you're a mortgage broker, if someone handed you a, a name and address, you wouldn't know if that person had a good credit score. You wouldn't know if they had enough income. They wouldn't know how big a house they wanted. You wouldn't know anything about them, so you couldn't make any decisions whether or not you wanted to actually pursue that person. If you had all the time in the world, you can pursue everybody. But if you don't, you want to be able to rank order information about people based on qualifiable information, the information that you need to make a decision whether or not that person is a potential prospect for you. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to collect qualifiable leads. And out of that, we'll have lots more qualified leads than we ever thought possible. So there are four core arts of the trade show samurai. The first is called the art of engagement. The second is the art of intrigue, the art of inquiry, and the art of disengagement. And that will equal a qualifiable lead, lots and lots and lots of qualifiable leads that we'll take home to our salesperson. Fresh Light is the case study that I'm going to be using. This is a former client of mine. I've changed the name and changed it a little bit. But uh, they're a company that makes filtration products, water filtration, air filtration, and this particular product, which is a, a product I'll talk about in a minute. Um, so as you hear me talk about the example, uh, Fresh Light is the case study I work. But this is going to certainly be adapted for uh, any, any product. And one of the things I do uh, in my consulting work is I help people um, create the scripts and the lead cards and things that, that are specific to their uh, particular company and focus on FAQs and things like that and, and the training process. But we want to start with uh, this case study called Fresh Light. So the first step is called the art of engagement. This is how you bring somebody into your booth. It's a very physical, very structured process with a lot of nonverbal communication. So pay attention to the footwork, pay attention to how I describe eye contact and things like that. So this is a typical booth layout. What we, the, the, the red represents a 10 by 10 booth, and the dotted line is what I call coastline. It's the part of your booth that touches the carpet of the common area for the show, usually the aisle of the show. The more coastline you can get, the better. I don't really care where a booth is located in a trade show hall. I don't, the, the, to me, there's no good or bad location. What's really good or bad is how much coastline. So the best booths are island booths, where you have coastline on all sides. The smallest booths are a 10 by 10. But a 10 by 10 booth can knock the socks off a 20 by 30 booth if you're using trade show samurai techniques. So the size of the booth is less important. It's the amount of coastline that really matters. So maximize your coastline. And the reason it matters is because it gives you more opportunity to interact with the crowd as they walk by. So there's a proper stance that you need, a physical stance that you need to assume when you are uh, working the coastline of a booth. So the first foot is on your booth carpet, and the second is out of your, out of your booth car carpet, scanning the aisle, looking for people to walk into your range. Generally speaking, most shows discourage you from actually stepping into the aisle to solicit attendees, so I get as close to being in the aisle as I can without actually being in the aisle. And I scan a 5 to 10 foot range of people of space in front of me. And so here are people walking around in their bare feet on the trade show floor, milling around, trying to avoid uh, salespeople at all costs, but once in a while they'll find something that interests them. If somebody walks into your tractor beam at 10 feet, you smile and you acknowledge them by nodding your head, by smiling, letting them know that you see them, making steady, gentle eye contact with them. That's going to be their moment of truth where they kind of connect with you. And if you've sent, sent the postcard, they'll recognize at least, you, at least a little bit who you are. Um, this is part of a rule called the 10-5 rule because as they walk closer to you, you actually speak. So at 10 feet, you acknowledge. At 5 feet, you speak. This is a great way to, uh, to gently engage the consumer without being uh, overbearing. If you acknowledge them too early, then you have a lot of dead time in between the time that you're going to actually talk to them uh, and you first saw them. If you acknowledge them too late, you're going to be startling. Now this is a basic technique. There are advanced techniques that I talk about in my book, Trade Show Samurai, for, in case people don't make eye contact with you. But generally speaking, this is a great way to engage people. Gentle eye contact at 10 feet with a smile, and then at 5 feet you speak. And what comes out of your mouth is going to make the difference between whether or not you have a lead or not. I call it the Battle of Bonsai. The Battle of Bonsai is a branching technique that will help you understand exactly who this person is that you're talking to. Not everybody on the trade show floor is worth talking to. In fact, there's lots of them that are not. But most of the time when we go to trade shows, we work the booth by milling around, chit-chatting up attendees, passing out tchotchkes, sipping our drinks, drinking coffee, talking to our booth buddies, and not really engaging with a disciplined fashion. We want to know that the, the, the enemy of the trade show samurai is time. You have a limited amount of time, three or four days on the show floor, um, a few hours a day. Even if it seems like a long time, in the scheme of things, it's not very much time. You want to maximize every single second you spend on the show floor. So the trade show samurai, make sure that they 
really focus on what's going on. So the Battle of Bonsai is a way to branch off individuals so you know what's valuable about that person and you can make the right pitch. You want to say, ask a question that's going to pique the person's interest and get them engaged with what you're about to talk about. So most of the time in sales, we want to ask open-ended questions where people get them talking with themselves. That's not the case in the trade show samurai technique, so it's a little bit counterintuitive. We want to ask a few yes or no questions um, so that we can quickly assess this person and decide what we want to talk to them about. The first question you want to ask is, do you carry fresh light products? Remember, that's our case study, fresh light. Do you carry our products? Are you one of our customers? Um, this is an important question. Even if you're a startup company and have no customers, this uh, leaves the impression that you are someone worth talking to. Um, and they will most likely say no, which is perfectly fine. And every time you, know, if you, if you notice the footprints, watch them step back into the booth backwards so we get the person out of the aisle. The next thing you want to ask is are they a retailer or a distributor? At every show, there are a few buckets of people. There might be at a, at a candy show, there might be manufacturers and retailers. Or at a hardware store like we're talking about right now, there might be retailers or distri distributors. At a fishing tackle store, there might be uh, retailers and, uh, and, and distributors as well. Um, at, a, at a dental show, there are probably groups of dentists and hygienists, for instance, and suppliers. So there's always one or two major buckets of people at the show. You'll need to determine in advance what these buckets of people are and plan your trade show samurai approach to accommodate that. So we ask them, are you a retailer or a distributor? Trying to put them into the right bucket. What we don't want to do is just go right into a spiel about who we are because it may not be relevant to that person at, that any, at any given time. We need to make sure who we know who they are so we can make a relevant pitch. So this person's told us they're a retailer in this example. And again, we're walking backwards into the booth. Then we ask, what types of products do you specialize in? Or what kinds of projects are underway? Or what types of things do you do? And ask them a little bit about yourself. Again, you should predetermine what types of uh, products they could possibly specialize in based on your understanding of the show. So at this particular example, we're going to a houseware show. So we know there are housewares dealers, there are hardware shops, people looking for things to carry in their stores. Um, there aren't as many services. There aren't restaurants, for instance. So we don't have to plan on someone telling us they're a restaurant. But we'll find out pretty soon who they are. So this person says they're a hardware store. Next question you ask is, have you heard about Freshlight? Have you heard about our products? Have you heard about our company? Um, if they say no, they haven't, they're not customers, we want to ask, if, again, even if you're a startup, you want to ask if they've heard about you. This person says, I've never heard of you. That brings us to the art of intrigue. The art of intrigue is how do you get someone enough information about who you are to be interested in giving you information about them. At this point in the game, it's much more important that you understand who they are than, they, than them understanding who you are. It doesn't really matter if they know who you are. What really matters is if you know if they're a potential prospect for you. That's the most important part. At trade shows, we want to tell everybody everything about ourselves. Stop talking about yourself and use this as an opportunity to, to learn about the other person. And the art of intrigue helps us contain ourselves enough just to give enough information to help them learn about who we are. So this person, the response we planned for Fresh Light was, we make a light bulb that cleans the air. Now, if you're listening to this, you should probably think, wow, that's sort of an intriguing concept, a light bulb that cleans the air. It doesn't matter that Fresh Light made water filters and air filters and cleaning systems and all kinds of other stuff. They did have this one in particular product called a light bulb that cleans the air that was particularly intriguing. So we used that as our hook to hook this person. And they inevitably, inevitably ask, really? How does it do that? Now they're interested. Now we've intrigued them enough. They want to learn a little bit more about who, who we are. And they're on the hook for uh, understanding why we're different than everybody else. And in your mind of the trade show samurai, this person's thinking, okay, this is a hardware retailer, so I can use my hardware retailer trailer. A trailer is like a movie trailer, like an elevator pitch. It's a short uh, description of what you do that's specifically designed to talk to a particular type of person. So at this particular show, you might have hardware retailers, you might have baby shops, you might have uh, housewares dealers. Everyone will have a slightly different trailer that we'll use. So here's what the guy says. The light bulb emits anions, which are ions similar to those emitted by nature in waterfalls. The anions cancel out ions that cause odors, smoke, germs, and allergens in the air. It is an LED light and lasts over 20 years under normal conditions. Fresh Light carries a wide variety of filtration products based on this technology. Our retailers have, had, have been successful with the product in a number of environments. Hardware stores have historically been our best outlets. They find they fit in nicely in both the lighting section as well as fil air filtration. Customers are excited about the product because it has the benefits of an air purifier at a much lower cost. 
about half that of an average filtration system. Plus, it fits into an ordinary light socket, saving space. So what we've done is we've predetermined what we're going to say to this person. We've written out in advance a script that we've all memorized so we can tell it to the person. This, this thing touches on the question they asked about the product, our, our hook. It touches on our other products, the air filtration products, and it has a message specifically for hardware stores and how they might use it in their store to make for best results. This is a very nice trailer, a very nice elevator pitch to intrigue the person additionally. Next thing they're going to do is going to ask questions about who you are. They inevitably ask questions. You don't have to tell them everything, let them ask the questions. So this person's saying, hmm, does it really work? And you're thinking, ah, the does it work question. You're uh, anticipating that question because before the show, you went down and sat down and wrote down all the possible questions that somebody might ask. I call it 50-50. Write down 50 potential questions that somebody might ask your company, and then sit down and carefully write out 50 answers to those questions, making sure they put, cast you in the best light. Then everyone rehearses those and memorizes the answers so they can re regurgitate them at the right time. It's called 50-50 because once you've done the first 50, you sit down and do 50 more. By the time you're done with that exercise, you'll have every possible question covered. And you can have a predetermined, pre-canned response that will save time and make sure you have the maximum impact of the answer to that question. So this person's thinking, ah, the does it, question, the does it work question. Absolutely, it creates an effect similar to what you might experience standing next to a waterfall. The clean air is created by the same reaction. We have a number of videos on our website showing the bulbs clear out a smoke-filled room. It's amazing. I'd love to get some additional information about you. Do you have a minute to answer a few questions about your store? So now what we've done is we've answered the person's question with a short, succinct answer that gets to the point and answers the question, and now we're setting them up to be asked questions of our own so we can learn more about them. So every single time you answer a question from them, you should always lead back in, do you mind if I ask you a few questions? The key here is to avoid a long, drawn-out conversation about your product. So this person agrees. Okay. That brings us to the art of inquiry. How do we ask the right questions of the right people at the right time? Once we've set up the, we've engaged the person, we've piqued their interest, now it's time for us to ask questions of them. And here's how you do it. The first thing you want to do as a team before you go to the show is sit down and talk about what's the ideal customer to you. What is the easiest customer for you to sell? What's the best time, uh, the best kind of lead you can get? It doesn't necessarily mean it's the biggest possible lead. It means it's the easiest one for your sales guys to sell. If you gave your, your sales guys a stack of leads, which ones would they want to call first, would they be most, most, most excited about? So in this case, the sales guys want to talk to people who are owners or buyers of shops. Hardware stores are great. They want to talk to hardware stores. Um, they want people who carry filter, or allergy, or light products, and they want stocking people who have more than 10 stores. So now we can see there are a couple of things that are Im important to, uh, uh, to qualifying a lead for this particular company. Specifically, job function is important, the type of company they are, the products they carry, the number of stores they have, and whether or not they're a stocking distributor. All those things matter a lot. So it's one thing just to collect our name and address. We can get that in a business card. And in fact, we can actually take their business card and staple it to this sheet. Um, but what we really need is qualifiable information, information we can use to hang our hat on. So let's take, this is what our lead card looks like. And by the way, if you take nothing away from this seminar except for one thing, this is the thing that matters most. A paper-based lead card is the most important tool you can have, bar none, in your trade show strategy. There are lots of electronic versions that are available, but always have a paper version available in case it doesn't work. You can use your, your bad zappers, but you want to make sure it contains the right information. So here's an example. This is a guy, Mike Moy, Samurai Ace Hardware. There's his email address. We've got his phone number, his address. And it looks like he's the purchasing guy. He's in management. Uh, it's a chain. They carry air filters and allergy products and lighting products. They have 20, 10 to 20 stores, and they're a stocking distributor. This looks like a really great lead. And there's some special notes written down here. This, these guys have a special allergy section in the store, which is right next to the air filtration section. They have 11 stores in California that do high volume in air filtration. Hmm, that looks like a really exciting lead. If I was a sales guy, I'd be really excited about getting that lead. Down here, I have my initials checked off, so if like, my handwriting was hard to read, the sales guy can call me. And I also have Hank checked off. Hank, Will, and Carl stand for hot, warm, and cold. Based on your impression of the person you're talking to, you can check one of these off. If the person seemed really eager to talk to a sales guy, you can check off Hank. If they weren't really eager, you can check off Carl. I use that because if I have hot, warm, and cold on there and somebody sees me checking that off, they may be disappointed that I thought they were cold. So one of the things that you'll have with you at the show is you'll have a clipboard with a stack of these lead cards, and you will be filling out the notes, not them. It's designed so all you have to do is check, check, check things off instead of filling out a lot of information. The notes section, if you have a few notes... Um, but for the most part, you'll be checking off information that can be instantly used to, to
to rank order or qualify that particular lead. You can also use electronic versions of this. I call it the Samurai Uploading Market Outpost. I haven't had a lot of luck with electronic versions. The paper version is the most reliable. Um, but there are always new technologies coming out, and I uh, encourage you to try those out. But make sure you can collect the qualifiable information. That's the most important thing you need. The last part you want to learn is the art of disengagement. You've talked to the person, you've captured their lead, you have their information, we want to get rid of that person. I call it the Tao of Tchotchke. These are the things that a lot of people bring to trade shows. They bring pens and mouse pads and stickers and candy and all kinds of different things in hopes of luring someone into your booth. These things do not lure someone into the booth, and the person they do lure into the booth are the, probably the wrong people. Your art of engagement will lure people into the booth. Your eye contact, your battle of bonsai, those are the things that are going to engage you properly. These things are not used to lure someone into a booth. They are used to end that conversation. The best thing you can pass out is actually a business card, but if you have t-shirts and hats and things like that and you want to pass out, the time to do it is at the end of the conversation and only give it to people who you've talked to. So here's how it works. You're talking to the person, you've collected their lead card, collected all the information, and it's now time to physically turn your body away from them and start walking towards the edge of the booth. And you say something like, it was nice meeting you, please take our catalog or card or squeeze ball or yin yangle, which I'll talk about in a minute. I'll make sure someone from our sales department follows up next week. And as you can see, when you start walking towards the edge, they will also turn and start walking towards the edge naturally. If you want to talk to our sales team department sooner, here's the card for our VP of sales. I rarely give out my own card at a trade show because I don't want them calling me. I want them to call their, our, our salespeople. I've already captured the information I need from them, but now I want to pass it off to our salesperson. Thank you for stopping by. And on that person goes in their merry way, knowing that they had a positive, informative interaction with that person and they're interested in learning more later on. And you happen to be perfectly situated to get the next person. You're back in position and you're scanning for your next contact. At 10 feet, you acknowledge and smile and start the process over again. The entire process takes two or three minutes. It's not a very long process. Like I said before, the enemy of the trade show samurai is time. You want to get the most done in the shortest amount of time, capture the most leads. Now that you have the lead information, the sales department can follow up and spend the time necessary to get that person on board later on. But you rarely can sell someone from start to finish at a trade show. Not all trade shows are like that, but sometimes you actually can sell someone. But for purposes of this presentation, we're going to assume that it's a business-to-business -business selling opportunity that cannot be done in one conversation. So we've gone over the engagement, intrigue, inquiry, and disengagement, and now we've captured the lead. We have a lead that we can take back to, it, to our sales force. The next thing you want to do at the show is solidify your brand. The person recognized you because you sent a photograph. Now they've been through your booth, they've seen who you are, they have a little more understanding of who you are, and they're expecting you to call back. Next thing you want to know is do is reinforce the fact that you are a formidable player in the market by reinforcing your brand throughout the, the, throughout the show. And there's two ways to do that, through sponsorships and what I call flags. They need to be visible, frequent, and positive. So you need people to see your brand all over the show, if at all possible. And I'm going to show you some inexpensive ways to do that. There are a lot of sponsorship opportunities. There's events going on, there are programs, there are sessions, there's meals, you can buy the lanyards, the bags, all kinds of tchotchkes to have your, your logo plastered all over the show. Unfortunately, these are usually pretty expensive and not everybody can afford them. The large companies can and hence they dominate the shows, but small companies can make a splash too and I'll show you how that works. The first is what you hand out, you know, business cards and tchotchkes people might use or carry around with them. Um, but that's not really the best one because they usually stick it in their bag and it doesn't show up until later. Flags, on the other hand, are inexpensive ways that are very visible on the show floor. So first one I want to show you is the bottled water trick. The bottled water trick is something I discovered a few years ago that helps us get our logo throughout the show. What you do is you purchase bottled water, not water bottles that people can refill, but bottled water, disposable water bottles with your logo on them. They're not very expensive, and most shows will allow you to bring bottled water to pass out of shows as if it's a tchotchke. There are a lot of catering issues, but bottled water is one that people can typically get away with. Make sure you check with your show first. So what you do is you buy these bottles of water, and before the show starts, you walk around to the other exhibitors and pass them out. You introduce yourself, tell them that you're an exhibitor, and say, hey, I thought you guys might want some bottles of water for your show, and give it to every exhibitor you can find. Pass them all out to the exhibitors, not the attendees, only to the exhibitors. And what they will do is they'll say thank you, and they'll think you're a swell guy, and they'll be really excited about knowing you, and you'll be just positioned as like Santa Claus passing out gifts. But what they don't know is that you're using them to market your products. 
They will set these things out all over their booth as they sip them throughout the day, and your logo will be in people's face all day long, unbeknownst to the person promoting for you. For some reason, people are pretty tidy about their booths, but they'll leave bottles of water sitting about on countertops and desks and, and things, and your logo will be on all of them. Um, so it's a great way to get your logo out in front of the show all over the place. Plus, attendees are often thirsty, so the bottle of water catches their eye. This is a very powerful way of inexpensively getting your logo plastered all over the show. The next one I call Yin Yangle. Yin Yangle is a trade show game designed specifically to get your logo plastered all over the show and get people promoting and talking about your brand during the show. Yin Yangle is a branded word of mouth trade show event game. It is uh, basically about the size of a business card, has your logo and branding on it, and a clip that hangs off someone's lanyard. On the bottom edge of the, the Yin Yangle card is a, a code number, a unique code number uh, that matches somebody else's card. So what happens is the people can walk around the show, they'll see another person with a Yin Yangle card with your logo on it, and they'll walk over and introduce themselves and they'll try to match up those codes. If the code matches, they return to your booth to win a prize. It is a phenomenally engaging game. It helps people network at the show floor, which is what you want anyway. It keeps your your logo on pinned on people's shirts and jackets all day long, very visible, and it gets people coming back to your show and your booth in a very positive way. It's not very expensive to pull off, um, and it is a great flag to get your brand out in front of the show um, all day long, and it helps people remember that they visited you. And you can adjust the thing to to give out as many or as few prizes as you want. Here's an example of with the fresh light cards. Um, I use a code now, and this is a shaped one that are more expensive, um, but you can match up a shape or a code works just as well. So here's people with their, these people with the yin yangle cards are people who have uh, already spoken to our booth staff. They've received them on their way out, and these two found found a match. Hooray! And they come back to our booth and get a prize. But it's a great way for them to meet each other um, over uh, an positive experience over our brand. So the yin yangle is another way to solidify your brand by putting flags throughout the show floor. After you leave the show, you need to cultivate your prospects. You will usually have more leads than you could handle in the short term. So you need to keep these people busy enough to want to come back uh, and recognize you when you call. So this is where. Um, you want to score the leads. If you have enough leads, you can actually rank order them by assigning points. And this is another area that I spend some time with with consulting clients, helping them score and rank these leads. If you have a few hundred, you can usually just go through by hand and, and kind of pick out the most valuable leads. But as a general rule, you want to enter the leads into your CRM program and rank order them so your sales guys know who to call first. They'll start at the top of the list and call the, the best prospects right away. But as you go deeper into the list, um, they'll have less and less time to call the less valuable leads. Uh, it'll take them more time. Um, Hank, Will, and Carl are a great way to help prioritize leads as well, but for the most part, um, the, the, the rank scoring will help you make the most of the, the, the scores. Hank, Will, and Carl, again, are the hot, warm, and cold that we talked about earlier. Um, for the most part, uh, this is a good way to give your personal impression of the lead, but use that as part of your scoring model. Use your blog, Twitter, Facebook, your email list, LinkedIn accounts. Do whatever you can to connect with these people after the show and keep them uh, informed about what your products and what's going on. So regular emails or Twitters or whatever you do to communicate with people you should be doing. Um, and it's nice to have a, a sequence that you'll put out after the show that will keep them engaged for the next few weeks while your sales guys get a chance to call. And that will help cultivate them and keep them warm while your sales guy uh, gets around to calling them. And when they do call them, they'll say something like this. Hi, Mr. Prospect. I'm Frank Lewis. Mike Moyer gave me your name. He said he met you in Boston, and you mentioned you were interested in giving Fresh Light a try in your stores. Mike and I talked a little bit about your needs, and we think that you might find our products interesting. And they can go on from there. They have the notes. They know what the stores are. They know how many stores there are. They know what their products are. They know enough about that person to make a positive impression and start a meaningful conversation. Likewise, the prospect saw the postcard, recognized you at the show, had a positive interaction with you, so your brand was solidified afterwards, and they're, they're, they're going to remember that person as if you're a warm referral. That is what I call a virtual referral. It's a great way to break the ice. It's a great conversation the sales guy can have. You've delivered a really valuable, warm lead to their doorstep. So what we've shown is planting the seed, which is making a familiar face, capturing the lead using the four core arts of the trade show samurai, solidified your brand using flags, cultivate prospects by keeping them in the loop, and then you harvest the sales by your sales guy actually reaching out to these people and having uh, treating them as if they're a warm lead. 
So that's how you capture leads at a trade show. Like I said before, it's amazing how much of an increase you can get simply by using these techniques. They're not very expensive. They can be done within anybody's uh, trade show structure they already have within, within just about any budget. And the results are very, very dramatic. Um, at my blog, uh, tradeshowsamurai.com, you can find more information, lead card templates, a draft of my book, Trade Show Samurai, which is also available on Amazon.com. Um, and I do offer these webinars from time to time as well. If you need any more assistance, my name is Mike Moyer. My number is 773-426-6353. My email address is mikedmoyer at gmail.com. My website is tradeshowsamurai.com. Uh, I help clients all the time implement the trade show samurai techniques. I do uh, on-site training. I help them come up with their, their trailers, their pitches, their battle of bonsai, proper footwork, design lead cards, and actually attend shows from time to time with people and help them execute on the show floor. I also uh, help make the yin yangle card game so that you can have flags throughout the show. It's an easy, uh, inexpensive way to make sure your brand is getting recognized throughout the show floor. Um, it's, it's the game I mentioned earlier. I'd be happy to talk to you about uh, getting your hands on a set of those for your company. I guarantee the time that you spend with Trade Show Samurai will be well worth your time in terms of generating more leads than you ever thought possible in a million years at a trade show. So good luck with your show, and thank you very much for watching.